Welcome back. So in the last few uh, sets of videos, we've been walking through the same basic steps for how to perform what's called maximum likelihood estimate. And just to review uh, the basic steps we've been performing as we've been first fitting a mean and then fitting to one data point and then fitting a mean to multiple data points was we began by writing down the likelihood. And uh, that actually you know, ultimately is going to end up being the hard part is understanding what likelihood to write down. Because after that, a lot of this is mechanism. We write down the likelihood, we take the log, because that's going to end up making a lot of products turn into sums and make a lot of exponents go away uh, and generally make our, our math easier. We then take the derivatives of our uh, model with respect to the different parameters. We set each of those derivatives equal to zero, and then we solve for the maximum likelihood estimate. So if we, like I said, in the last video, we looked at how to estimate the mean. In this uh, video, I'm going to talk about how to estimate the standard deviation. So here, we can kind of skip ahead because we've already written down the same likelihood uh, and we've already taken the log. So, you know, the likelihood doesn't change depending on which parameter you're estimating. It's the same likelihood, it's the same logs. So again, this was a uh, normal distribution with multiple data points. There was n data points in the vector y. We're estimating the mean initially, but now we're going to estimate this sigma. So if you want to estimate sigma, we have to take the derivative with respect to sigma instead of the derivative with respect uh, to mu. So there's not going to, we go to the first term here and we can kind of see now why I, I earlier separated out uh, the log two pi from the log sigma because there is a sigma here now. So this, then we take the derivative of this. Uh, if you remember the derivative of a log of something is one over that thing. So we're going to end up with n over a sigma. This has no sigma in it, so it goes away. And then when we take the derivative over here, uh, this whole sum with respect to the sigma is just a constant. So we just have uh, a sigma squared in the denominator, so we have a sigma to the minus two. We take the derivative of that, it'll be sigma to the minus three, and the minus two will come out front. The minus will cancel out, the two will cancel out. And that's what we get here. So again, we've taken the derivative of the log sigma, getting minus n over sigma, and then the uh, we go from a, a minus two sigma to a minus three sigma, sorry, minus uh, sigma to the minus two power to the, down to the sigma to the minus three power. And then again, the whole sig, the whole summation here, um, the mean, the, the squared errors, the sum of squared errors uh, is just a constant relative to the sigma. We set this equal to zero, and then we need to solve. So first thing we're going to do is move the minus two sigma over to the other side. Cool. And now I'm going to multiply both sides by sigma cubed. Uh, and so that'll get rid of the sigma squared on the right-hand side. It'll leave us with a sigma squared on the other side, because we'll have a sigma cubed divided by sigma. And then we'll divide both sides by n. So we'll just end up with a sigma squared over here and a sum of squared errors divided by n, um, which will give us a mean squared error. Sorry, yeah, mean squared error. Uh, so that gives us the variance is the mean squared error. And if we take the square root of that, we get the sigma is going to be our root mean squared error. Uh, yeah, so that's our best estimate of our standard deviation is going to be our root mean squared error.